All right. So, so maybe it's time to, to start the second part. And uh, yeah, so welcome back to the second part. Uh, Alan, please uh, take it away. Yeah, so, <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to take my, my epi and project it to x. And if you remember, so epi, I said here, you can reduce to the case that pi is a partial permutation. And if you're actually in one of the, if k equals n and you're in one of these components, then you would reduce to the case that x is a permutation matrix. And y is then the transpose of that, the inverse permutation matrix times a diagonal matrix. That's the lower upper condition. And then you take, so there's, an, uh, there's uh, that's a, that's, that's a system of orbit representatives for this group action. Uh, but in particular, when X is a permutation matrix and you hit it with U minus cross B plus and take the closure, you're gonna get a matrix Schubert variety. So we've long known how to compute the degree of matrix Schubert varieties uh, by counting pipe dreams. So an ordinary pipe dream use only, I, the way I wanna do it today, I'm going to use these tiles in the Northwest and in the Southeast, I'm gonna have nothing. So, um, the, so these five guys across the top, these are the sort of ordinary pipe dreams I want to think about. And it's, it's not mathematically any different to, to say I only have crosses in, um, I've, I've, in the Southeast, I've got nothing versus in the Southeast, it's solid elbows. So uh, traditionally you think about in the Southeast there being solid elbows, but I wanna do it this way. So the definition is you have only these two kinds of tiles and you insist that no two pipes cross twice. And uh, so this is for one, four, three, two. So these guys, one, two, three, four are coming out as one, four, three, two down the side. And these are the five pipe dreams where one, two, three, four go on the top and one, four, three, two come out the side. And so the degree of this guy turns out to be five. So that you could get from the, um, uh, from the original literature on pipe dreams. But um, uh, it, it was explained in this geometric way by me and Ezra Miller um, shortly before the, um, the other paper I mentioned with the, on the commuting scheme, where we degenerated the original matrix Schubert variety to a big union of coordinate spaces. So we, um, the way we did it was with this, uh, this revlexing degeneration. And I mean, you could, there's various ways to think about how we did it, but I'd, write like, I'd like right now to say, we revlex the Northwest variable Z11, and then Z12, and then Z13, and then Z21, and then Z22. We just dig our way from the Northwest, revlexing one at a time. And as we do, our, mono, our polynomials get to be more and more monomial. And we proved that the polynomials, the ones that, uh, that Bill Fulton had uh, shown define the matrix Schubert variety as a scheme, we show that they're a Grubner basis with respect to uh, this sort of term order. And uh, when we're done, <clears throat> we've got a big bunch of monomials which are square free. And so they're defining some reduced union of coordinate spaces. And there's one coordinate space for every pipe dream. And the coordinate spaces are very simple. You put a zero, if you've got a cross and otherwise you put uh, nothing, there's a, no condition, uh, that matrix entry is free. Okay, so much more recently uh, came the bumpless pipe dreams, which is another way to compute um, the degree or more generally the double Schubert polynomial, but let's say the degree for right now. Uh, this uses a bunch more tiles, oops, these guys here. Uh, there's one tile that's forbidden, the, um, uh, the elbows tile that they call the bump. And uh, so that one was fine for me in the pipe dreams, but it's forbidden in bumpless pipe dreams. They, there's a couple other changes. Uh, they are connecting the south to the east instead of the north to the west. So that's what you see going on here. And they um, still insist that no two pipes cross twice. And, um, and surprise, uh, these bumpless pipe dreams, there's again, the right number of them, the degree of the matrix Schubert variety. 
So there was a much tougher theorem than uh, the analog of what uh, Ezra and I did for the bumbles pipe, just for the ordinary pipe dreams, uh, due to two people in the audience. Um, that if you degenerate, but you lex from the southeast instead of revlexing from the northwest, you don't get a union of coordinate spaces anymore. You get multiplicities. So it will be a union, but the, each component will come with some scheminess. And you can ask, what's that multiplicity? And the multiplicity is recognizing the fact that the assignment of a coordinate plane to a bumbles pipe dream isn't injective. So back in what Ezra and I were doing, there were only two tiles. So if you knew the subspace, you could figure out the tile. But, <clears throat> um, but now if you, um, we're just putting zeros where there's empty tiles and all the other tiles are free, you can't uni uniquely figure out the bundles pipe dream given just where the empty tiles are. And that ambiguity uh, leads you to having uh, multiplicities on the components, that's their theorem. And, and uh, but then that means finally, uh, I'm giving this a historical thing now, you could do, compute the degree by just counting the number of bundles pipe dreams. So that's what we have here. And you can do better than the degree, you can compute the double Schubert polynomial. So that's an equivariant cohomology calculation. Instead of just counting a pipe dream and saying this contributes one, you say it contributes this big uh, polynomial, this product over all of the crosses for the ordinary case or the empty spots for the bumpless case of the position of the cross encoded as x of its row or of the tile, x of the row minus y of the column. You end up with these polynomials in here and you add them over all your pipe dreams and you get the double Schubert polynomial. All right, so now that we've warmed up with this old stuff. So by old stuff, I mean uh, this from 15 years, 20 years ago, basically. Um, this from much more recently. Now I want to unify these and think about the EPI instead of the matrix Schubert variety. So remember what EPI looks like. You can project it to the X side and you get a matrix Schubert variety on the nose or you can project it to the Y side and you get a matrix Schubert variety rotated by 180 degrees. And that's going to tie into why uh, pipe dreams and bubbles pipe dreams seem to be off from, uh, from each other by 180 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to now define a generic pipe dream. It's got all the tiles. And uh, I don't put any restriction on pipes crossing twice. And if pipes cross twice, you just follow them. So for example, take this guy right here. That's, this one is, I've got the blue and green crossing twice. And for me, that's just as good as this one. So these here are all of the bumpless pipe dreams for the identity. So fairly complicated. Already the identity is fairly complicated. And it's because, you know, with uh, the matrix Schubert variety, the major Schubert variety for the identity is the entire space. There's no equations, very simple. But E pi is already very complicated and it's gonna have a complicated formula for its degree and for its uh, um, a green cohomology class. So, so there's a difference in combinatorially what the definition looks like. Okay, we've got this combinatorial definition. There's also gonna be a difference in these degree formulae. So these degree formulae we just counted Every pipe dream contributed, or bumbles pipe dream, contributed one to the degree. These guys contribute powers of two. So the powers of two have to do with how many elbow tiles there are. So there's three kinds of elbow tiles, the J tile, the R tile, and the bump. And those, each of those is contributing a factor of two, a power of two. So when I have the minimum number of, uh, of elbow tiles, um, then I don't want a power of two, but whenever there's any extra, so these three guys have one extra, these have two extra, these guys have three extra, they get me powers of two. And so the total degree of these guys is what I have here, one, three twos, three fours, two eights, it adds up to 31. So um, 
that's going to be the um, the degree of e pi. So e pi will be so so first theorem I'm stating uh, I think uh, um, you know new beyond uh, old stuff. First new theorem is here's the here's a formula for the degree of e pi. You sum over the generic pipe dreams. Each one contributes a power of two. Okay, so what's going on is we're getting a degeneration, but not to a union of coordinate spaces, rather to a union of these complicated varieties FD I'm about to define. And these FDs are defined by some linear equations like you're used to, but also some quadratic equations. And so the quadratic equations say that these uh, flux terms um, uh, match up. So sometimes a flux will be zero, and sometimes two fluxes will be equal to each other. So remember how this, um, uh, how the, what sort of uh, group we have going on here. So when we degenerated back in this story, when we, when we did all these uh, degenerations at every, every matrix entry, either from the Northwest, uh, sorry, here, either from the Northwest or from the Southeast, eventually we got something where every component would have to be invariant under the torus that dilates every coordinate independently. So it's gotta be a coordinate space. So it was more interesting figuring out which coordinate spaces occur and with what multiplicity, but we knew we were gonna get coordinate spaces. If we did all these lextogens, all these rev lextogens, we were gonna get coordinate spaces. It was only a question of which. Now, that's not gonna be true here. Um, what I'm going to be doing um, in a moment uh, in this blue paragraph is I will be scaling one coordinate while anti-scaling the dual coordinate. And so when I'm done, I'll have only an n squared dimensional torus acting, but it'll be acting symplectically on this two n squared dimensional space. And so I can have, so like when I multiply xij by yji, that is an invariant for this n squared dimensional torus that's acting. And so I can have invariant equations of this form. All right, so these guys, they're defined by some linear and quadratic equations, and they're going to be the analogs of our coordinate subspaces. Uh, they are still at least complete intersections. So the degrees of them are just two to the number of quadratic equations that are involved. And if you want better than just the, than the degree, you want the uh, equivariant cohomology class, then these are the factors you're going to end up multiplying. So the A here is about scaling the x variables. The B here is about scaling the y variables. If you scale an x variable times a y variable, uh, times the conjugate y variable, then you get A plus B. All right, so I've already, I think, um, warned you about what the main theorem is going to be, which is we take this guy E pi and we do this degeneration of it that's lexing in one coordinate while rev lexing in the dual coordinate. And we do that and while, uh, and so that's doing the pipe dream degeneration um, on the X side while it's doing the bundless pipe dream degeneration on the Y side. And we prove that when we're done, we get this union, uh, the union of these components. So we, we can only prove that up to some lower dimensional junk that doesn't affect the degree or the equivariant cohomology class. Um, so uh, I could, I guess I got, I got what, four minutes, right? So you go to five. Um, You're good. All right, so yeah, I've got enough time to, for a couple of things. So one is um, if you take this variety E pi, and you think about projecting it to the X side, we know what you're supposed to get. You'll get the matrix Schubert variety. So what's the corresponding cohomological thing to do where I want to somehow be able to derive the double Schubert polynomial for pi. I wanna be able to derive it from this formula I have for the equivariant cohomology class of E pi. So E pi is the sum of the class of the FDs. The FDs are the easy, these easy things which are just products of those things. So if you project to, remember that I had my, this, my matrix space of X's, matrix space of Y's, and on the 
x side, I had scaling and I had this coordinate um, a, this equivariant parameter a about scaling the x's and this equivariant parameter b about scaling the y's. If you project to the x side and get the matrix Schubert variety, you can get a hold of that by looking at the b leading terms in this. So you take this formula and you say, what part of it, what would I get in here if I had the most powers of B? And the answer is, um, well, I'll always use the B here, I'll always use the B here, and I want to have the fewest of these factors. So to get the B leading term, you should have the smallest number of these. And it turns out that happens exactly when you've got an ordinary pipe dream. So the ordinary pipe dreams are characterized among the generic pipe dreams. They're characterized by the ones that minimize the number of these three tiles. And then there's a corresponding thing about projecting the other side where you say, I want the A leading term. So I want, of course, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use that. I want the fewest of these. And the bumpless pipe dreams are characterized by those that have the, um, uh, have the fewest holes. So of course we know how many holes they're supposed to have. It's the length of the permutation. But a, a bumpless pipe dream is exactly a generic pipe dream with the minimum number of blank tiles, except they're rotated by 180 degrees. So um, right, the bumble, bumbless pipe dreams are in the literature, they're supposed to be oriented like this. But that again has to do with the fact that when you project to the Y side, you don't get a matrix Schubert variety on the nose, you get one rotated by 180 degrees. So um, uh, here's just me showing off that uh, um, this combinatorial formula lets us compute these numbers like the degree of the fourth commuting variety by summing over these, uh, these bumpless pipe dreams, each one contributing a power of two. Okay. Now I want to finally, men I'm gonna end with something ahistorical that I can't, um, uh, I can't help but, uh, but bring up. What if we started the other way? What if we had started with e pies and we didn't know anything about pipe dreams? We just said, let's take these e pies and do this degeneration and think about the components of what we get. All right, so we do that and we find out the components look like this. And they have these, and they've got these linear equations and these quadratic equations. So what's going on with these quadratic equations is they're telling you that for every edge in the square that will eventually be a pipe dream, for every edge, some edges match up with other edges and some edges should be blank. And if you just work off of that, if you recognize that the variables you should be working in are these flux variables associated to the edges, and you just use this to start matching up edges, that discovers generic pipe dreams for you. And then from there, ordinary and bubbles pipe dreams. So the, the geometry is telling you, yes, you should have these pipes that are connecting um, uh, the edge E to edge E prime, or, or edge E should just be blank. All right, I'll stop there. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, I will stop the recording.